Good afternoon, and you're back here on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks for joining us again. Likeable Science is all about how science is a relevant, meaningful, and fun part of everyone's life, and that we all should embrace science and not consider it a isolated, standalone kind of subject that lives off in an ivory tower by itself. Today, I have uh, <coughs> Munir Hodges. Hi. Welcome, Munir, Thank from uh, Honolulu Community having... College, uh, the Pacific Center for Advanced Technology Training, if I got yes. that right, PCAT? Yes, PCAT. PCAT, okay, great. E easy to use the acronym there. <laughs> and uh, Munir is a, is a software engineer and professor uh, with that program. She's uh, done, teaches a bunch of different kinds of classes, I guess, uh, Java application development, Android and iPhone mobile app development, web app uh, animation and gaming with uh, uh, Unity 3D, all, all kinds of things. Sounds, sounds like Correct. you have many, many, many things. You've uh, taught uh, <laughs> your webmaster and technology advisor. Uh, you've offered workshops in many different places, I guess, on many different subjects. So, sounds like you have a, a wealth experience. Thank you. So, so let me just start by asking sort of how you got involved in, in the whole technology end of things. Um, I started in the 1980s. Wow. I was a student at University of Hawaii. Uh -huh and um, continued on to my graduate level studies in software engineering, uh -huh. and then started working at PCAT in 2000 wow, okay. as a software engineer and professor. Excellent, excellent. So, so what, what is PCAT in, in brief? Pacific Center for Advanced Technology Training is a consortium of a community colleges, seven community colleges within the UH system. And the mission of the PCAT is to provide training to the state of Hawaii. As you know, we are in the Pacific Rim, and we are pretty far away from the mainland. Mm -hmm. But we do have technology needs, technology training needs, and we do like to keep our technologists in the mm -hmm. islands. So therefore, PCAD was a, created with the you know, collaboration with the state and the university to provide um, advanced technology training to the state of Hawaii. Oh, excellent. That, that's a good, a good way to, to sort of yeah, generate, generate our workforce within our, okay. within our state boundaries and uh, hopefully at the same time generate jobs for all these people you're Correct. training, right? Yes. Excellent, excellent. And one of the things that, that sort of brought us together on, on this show right now is that you guys are doing your 15th annual symposium? Correct. Wow. So we have, this year is our 15th annual IT symposium, and IT symposium is bringing educators in our state together from all factors: mm -hmm. education in public, private, in lower, you know, K twelve, and all the way to you know higher ed, mm -hmm. to learn about what is the latest in technology and education. Mm -hmm. So our focus is really education. We want to see how we can take advantage of what is the latest in technology to enhance the learning experience of our students which helps our workforce development, you know, in return. Sure, sure. It, it, and there's, I mean, it, it's so much is happening now in terms of education uh, and, and technology. It, it used to be started out with education technology being a lot of just sort of very, very patient tutors, right? Mm -hmm. The computer right. that would wait for the right answer and, and would patiently keep telling you, no, this is wrong. This is, <laughs> but, but it's gotten a lot beyond that, right? Correct. Yeah. I mean, technology today is in everybody's hand. Sure. Therefore, everybody understands technology to a certain level, mm -hmm. but our education system needs to catch up to that level that makes education more fun mm -hmm. for the students to learn. So we hope that with the IT symposium, we bring together experts in what is the latest in mm -hmm. technology and be able to in, kind of encourage and in, bring enthusiasm to our education community, our teachers, our professors or you know technology coordinators mm -hmm. um, to see what they can do with right. technology in the classroom. So technology is not just in the computer science classroom. Right. It's in all levels. It's not just social sciences sure. constantly use technology. So that's the focus. Yeah, yeah. And, and as we get more and more, our technology gets more and more powerful, of course, its ability to help in education becomes greater and greater. And, and right. Now that we have uh, computer programs that can beat masters at chess, can beat masters at Go, uh, you begin to wonder. Uh, right. they, they, they should and robots. Be, right. Now, so right. there's a and, lot there. Right? And the, the, all the, the technologies involved in self-driving cars, of course, are very, you know, yes. uh, again, very relevant to education. Those, machine, that's, those are machines that are learning about their environments, right? Correct. And, and they're 
thus should have uh, clear applications in the education field, right? Yes, definitely. So um, we, we, I know you would uh, share some photos. Maybe that'll give uh, our audience a little bit of sense about how uh, some of the, the symposium might play out uh, if, we, if we could get uh, started. So maybe you can describe what's. All right, this is a photo from our last symposium, basically. Um, they are sharing with uh, audience the different ways of interacting with the screen and working with the you know audience. So having an interactive learning environment. We have a emeritus college in our uh, at PCAT, which we work with our senior citizens, and this is where the seniors are learning about how you know create photo gallery, how to create websites. Uh -huh. Okay. And um, this is, as you can see, there's a QR code on the screen. So the audience are taking and um, scanning, basically, the QR code to be able to get the information about the session that they are attending. This is from our last year. Oh, OK. Now, I just, I just recently actually put, loaded up an app on my phone that reads QR codes at the, uh, at the Bishop Museum. Right. And then we'll, we'll talk to you about this in whatever exhibit you're you're, Correct. You're seeing, yes. Yeah. So it's becoming very, you know, um, common now to see that um, it's a very, you know, in you don't need a lot of technology to be able to scan a uh -huh. QR code, but the wealth of information that you can get through it, it's really what the QR code is about. So all our symposiums basically have an app, a mobile app, that shows the audience how to get to their classes and uh -huh. how what sessions are offered, what time, so it's so, very so you're, handy. You're, you're making the technology integrated into the, into the symposium in a, in a very deep, sort of authentic way, right? Yes, yeah. yes. So you presumably have uh, ways for people to uh, uh, field questions or, or put questions up to panels Correct. via we, technology. We, and absolutely. We do that kind of interactive, mm -hmm. something like Kahoot is used, that we use and we ask the audience to participate right. and give us feedback on the session that they just listening and what do they think about the questions that the presenter might uh -huh. pose and yes. kind of taking the pulse of the audience see how it works wonderful wonderful so these symposia sound like very exciting events then yes uh, very exciting oh, okay. it's it's very i have been part of it from the inception uh -huh. and i always offer a session in in the um in those two days that we have and it's exciting to uh -huh. be there exciting to attend and exciting to present. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> and so roughly, uh, how, how big is these symposium? How, how many people do you get? I mean, I'm sure it must have changed over the years. It does. And I, we have kind of a cap for the total number of people that we can take. And it's about 300, 350. Okay. And the audience comes from our, all our community colleges, from all the uh, other islands. Mm -hmm. um, we have DOE, all the schools from elementary school all the way to high school. Wow. Um, we have private sector, all our private high schools mm -hmm. attend. So there's a nice range of from UH, from you know all the higher ed, mm -hmm. HPU, Chaminade, all the universities that we have. Anybody that it's in the education field in the state is welcome you know, to come. Others come, but mostly it's geared toward education. So. Sure, sure. But that's, I mean, that covers a broad range of things because there's not just direct sort of learning stuff in education. There's, a whole, there's all the support systems, too, that are... Yes, definitely, right? definitely. We do have a l large number of people who are IT support mm -hmm. within any school, within a DOE. So those people really benefit from this, too. Sure, sure. It, it keeps them up to date on skills, what's, what's emerging now as, as a good system to use. Yes. Because these systems change over time, particularly these days. Every day. Are cha changing very rapidly <laughs> now, yeah. And what was cutting edge a few years ago is now... Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we, yeah, we, we certainly are seeing that in yeah, your email systems, your calendaring systems, all just right. all, all this sort of infrastructure that we now rely on so heavily. That, that's very, very tricky to, to do. Um, so maybe we can uh, look, look a little further down our, uh, photo, our photo streams here. This is um, actually from our last IT symposium. Um, these two, they are from DOE department, from actually from community colleges from other islands. What they're doing is they're learning how to build a droid. Oh. So 
the device that you see, they have printed in using the 3D printer, uh -huh. and now they are attaching the te technical parts to it uh -huh. to be able to fly it. Oh, okay. So the sessions are hands-on, mm -hmm. some, and it's very educational and interesting. Well, it's intriguing how the technologies are merging sort of back and forth, too, with, with uh, you just mentioned 3D printing. I had uh, a show here a few weeks ago where we, we uh, discussed a, uh, the new, a new technology where somebody has developed a company that, that prints houses. 3D prints houses. Yes, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, yes. and, and can do a house in 24 hours, yes. basically, yes. Uh, full of you know, walls and insulation and yes, uh, it's, <laughs> the it's whole thing. There. Foundation. Yes, yeah, uh, <laughs> and, and it costs only ten thousand dollars. And amazing, sort of how, how the technologies are merging and, and, and interacting with one another, reinforcing each other. Right, um, it's just becoming part of our everyday life. Right, exactly, so exactly, just, and the. the the people who are uh, uh, material scientists, uh, learning about the different materials that then feed back into the three, 3D printing. And right, right, right. right. Looks, yeah. right. We do have a 3D printing mm -hmm. shop at school, mm -hmm. and um, it's fascinating to watch what you can create with it. So. Right, it used to be you were very limited in your materials, and you could only use one material. And, yes. And, and, but now it's it the, the, again the technology is boom 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 and, and people are creating very sophisticated multi-part components. Yes, uh, yes. I guess I guess it's used in the pharmaceutical industries yes, now. They use three D printing to, to do sort of layered capsules so that they dissolve and give different different uh, drugs or different dosages over a different time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So. Um, how has your program then changed over time? I mean, you're, it, it, it must. It's a constant, yeah. right. And that's part of the excitement being in the field for me is that I have seen the progress from very early on mm -hmm. to today, and you cannot stop learning. Right. So what PCAT does, what our, our mission is that, um, and what I love about it is that it allows somebody like me to explore. Mm -hmm to look at new technology, to mm -hmm. learn the new technology, mm -hmm. to bring it to the classroom. So that is the advantage of working in an environment where it is focused mm -hmm. on advanced technology, it is focused on education. Mm -hmm. So system benefits from it and we benefit from it to bring it to the community. Sure, because there, there are uh, technologies that sort of make uh, some hit in education, but then don't seem to maybe develop as fully as they should. The whole idea of the MOOCs, the massively open online courses, mm -hmm. a few years ago, sort of seemed like it was going to answer a lot of people's dreams, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, there's still MOOCs being offered, and, and they're still going along, but there's been a lot of back and forth about how effective they are, or what percentage of students complete them. Right, right. It is their models, you know, their mm -hmm. mode, mode of learning. And I think that's always going to be tested, and face-to-face, mm -hmm. -face, online, distance. You know, there are several modes like MOOCs that, you know, Khan Academy is mm -hmm. another one. So there sure. are a lot of these come around. And they answer your question. It's not that they're not effective, right. but it, they, people gravitate toward one or the other. And as you know, people decide which way sure. is going to win. So we focus in some online Mm -hmm. You know, environment learning. We do a lot of custom training, so mm -hmm. we do go to the client and train them. We write curriculum uh -huh. in the area that it's needed. So we are very actively looking at all possible modes okay. of delivery. Yeah, excellent. We're, we discuss this in our uh, I work at Pacific Resources for Education and Learning, mm -hmm. and. Uh, we work with a lot of the remote island communities in Micronesia where they have very bad internet. And we're yeah. talking about now loading up servers basically with appropriate software and all so that they'll have sort of locally available education that'll be s simple. They'll have tablets or whatever to, to right. access it from. Uh, and then won't need the internet to be up and running to have the education still a rich educational experience. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And again, it sounds like uh, stuff that's sort of. We are you, we're doing you, our parts. You, 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 you'll probably give us some good advice. Um, well, I'll tell you, we're going we're gonna to continue this conversation, but we're first going to take a, a brief break here. Uh, Munir Hodges is here from PCAT, Pacific Center for, for Advanced, Advanced Technology, Technology Training. Training. Good, got, got that one. PCAT.org. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science, and we'll be right back after a brief break. Aloha. You can join the Hawaii Farmer Series every Thursday from 4 to 5 on ThinkTech. And I'm your co-host, Matthew Johnson, here with Justine Espirito. 
And we are so thankful to have this show to use as a forum to get to know all the movers and shakers in agriculture in Hawaii and hear kind of their background in history as well as uh, their perspective on what they're doing and also the future for agriculture in Hawaii. So join us every Thursday. You can tweet in your own comments and suggestions and be a part of the conversation at Think Tech High. And we hope to see you every single Thursday. And you're back here on Luckable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. With me today in Think Tech Studios is Monir Hodges from PCAT, the Pacific Center for Advanced Technology Training, if I got that right. And uh, we're, we've been talking about PCAT and particularly about the PCAT uh, IT Symposium that's coming up. When, when is this coming up? It's going to be on um, May 25th and 26th. Okay. And the program starts around 8 o'clock, 8.30. And then goes all the way to 3.30 in the afternoon. Okay. And our audience are mostly educators from lower, from K through 20 and also the university student I mean, professors and faculty and staff are invited. Right. And, and the symposium is really geared to, to encourage people to come together, to learn about new technologies, learn about how the, maybe some older technologies are finding new life, being used in new ways collaborate with their friends, uh, right. fig figure out ways to make technology work better for them, right? Correct. Yeah, so we have sessions that are hands-on, and people sit around and solve a problem. Okay. And they have a moderator, and the moderator basically talks about the topic of the technology, and they build or they work on a solution to a technology problem that they might have. Uh -huh. Um, this year we also have, um, every year we have new sessions. Sure. New, as you know, technology is changing, so right. we're bringing new technology into the platform. Um, one of the areas that we are focusing is in software engineering and uh -huh. coding. Coding is becoming very popular between right. our students, and now we are learning that students in elementary school also can learn to code. Right. So in order to equip our faculty and our, you know, with the technology that it helps them, even if they are not a coder, how to encourage their students to become a coder. We are um, taking in this new device called Altino, which is an auto, uh, that device that is like built like an automobile, and what you do is you learn how to operate this with code. Uh -huh. So the students learn, if I want the auto to go forward, what kind of coding I need to do, mm -hmm. so they write that code, and because of the engagement they have with the interaction with the device they have, they're actually learning a lot of content mm -hmm. and information. They learn about speed and they learn about math. They learn about how to code the device and they learn, you know, what it does. Mm -hmm. So we have um, faculty from schools. We have actually uh, Oceanit and um, Kamehameha School are the partners oh. in this endeavor Excellent. to bring this technology to the classroom. So I'll be offering a session in this IT symposium to show our educators how to take advantage of this device mm -hmm. to teach coding in any classroom. It doesn't have to be a computer science, it could be your social science mm -hmm. environment. And uh, exercise I will do probably is going to be something has to do with a person going from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. And students need to collaborate together how to get to point B and mm -hmm. along the way how to solve the problem and write the right code to get their device to the right location. Yeah, I've, I've been amazed to watch coding is now almost considered uh, sort of a, a basic fundamental skill for kids. Uh, people talk about, well, every child needs to learn to do this now. It's, yeah. it's going to be the way to, that they communicate, basically. It's going to be as basic as reading or writing or fundamental arithmetic. And, and right. So coding is really uh, problem solving. Mm -hmm. And problem solving is a really a natural way for us to think. So sure. We problem solve every second in our life. Mm -hmm. So to think that um, we need an age specific mm -hmm. to learn how to problem solve, I think that was the idea that uh -huh. was, you know, that's why we had computer science mostly offered in the college mm -hmm. level. But now we realize that students in elementary school also can learn to think that way. And it's natural for them because that's what they do. Sure. So. Uh, the pro problems have to be posed a little differently, a little yes. different context, a little, little different tools to solve them. Right. But basically, so you must then, yeah, have really interesting things from the students coming up who have come up through a learning coding from a very early age. They must 
presumably have a very sophisticated understanding of coding by the time they get Definitely. to be college age. Definitely. Yeah. And even even through my years of teaching, I have experienced that that the students today are in a totally different platform in learning mm -hmm. the technology and coding. Right. Yeah. Because the students who you're seeing today, this kind of technology has been part of their lives. Yes. Since they were small children. Correct. Whereas Correct. many of us learned it a little later in life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we had to learn how to think and how to solve, right. and they know it already. Yeah. Right. Huh. I, that, that, I haven't thought about that, but it probably does. It profoundly reshapes the way they approach uh, problem solving exercises. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Huh. <laughs> Fascinating. Well, wonderful. And um, so, what, what, do you, what do you hope the, the, the people will take away from the symposium? We're hoping that we, more than anything, we we create enthusiasm okay. and encourage them to learn the tools that are offered or sessions that are effective, mm -hmm. to take it to their classroom, mm -hmm. to learn from this and be able to enhance mm -hmm. and advance what they teach to the students. Right, because as you as you point out now, it, it's really sort of infiltrated all the different fields, so you no longer necessarily have to teach computer science as a sort of a separate thing, right? Correct. Computer science is part and parcel of reading classes, writing classes, science classes, <laughs> math classes, right, uh, right, wh wh very whatever, true. yeah. Uh, you can do social science simulations, experiments on social networking, right? Yes, yes. All with, all uh, with, with computer uh, assistance to make it more lively, more engaging to the students, uh, a richer, more meaningful. Yeah. Very true. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that that sounds uh, that sounds very exciting then. So, uh, how is how is PCAT supported as an organization? PCAT is a, as I said, it's a consortium. Right. So we do have uh, funding through the state. Okay. And and because of the funding we have, we are able to offer a very competitive price for okay. the training that we have. So, mm -hmm. if you go to PCAT.org, you can see the array of courses and sessions that we offer there. Right. And the prices are very compatible, um, very reasonable, I should say, mm -hmm. compared to the private industry. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because we do have a support that uh -huh. helps us to do that. Okay. So that is the funding source for right. the And um, most of us that work at PCAT, we are a state employee as a faculty mm -hmm. or staff. And therefore, that also another way that um, it gets getting funded. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Well, that, that sounds good. And then the symposium, you either have a separate pool of money for that, or you uh, symposium. Sometimes we have um, sponsorship, so, and people like a, provide a sponsor, there, yeah. right? Um, so the sponsors provide some of that. Sometimes mm -hmm. we have the PCAT provides, the campuses provide some resources mm -hmm. that we all come together. Excellent. No, and I, make it happen. That's great. That's that's how you make things really move ahead. Right. That's how you move the needle here is by b bringing all the diverse groups together, all right? right. You said you mentioned Ocean that I know. Actually, I'm, I'm headed over to Ocean after this for a, oh, one right? of their tours. Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. No, they're a fantastic group. And they've got all kinds of good stuff going on there. Yes. They think way ahead of the curve in a yes. lot of ways, I, yes. uh, I believe. So they are the one brought the Altino. So they uh -huh. will also have a session themselves on, mm -hmm. the, on this IT symposium okay. regarding that. So. And they do a lot of work, I know, with the whole design thinking ideas. Yes, design which, thinking, which, is, which again sort of ties into this whole creative problem solving approach, yes. right? Yes, definitely. Yeah, so yes. That, that's, that's uh, very neat to see how, how there's uh, mm -hmm. ties to different, different groups and different approaches here. Right. So PCAT is not just within education, IT symposium focuses on education, mm -hmm. but PCAT really has a reach into industry, mm -hmm. into um, international students. Mm -hmm. you know, we bring international students here for training. We have partnership with other universities mm -hmm. in Japan, in Korea. And so we've had many occasions where PCAT really works not only with the industry, but also with education and Excellent. partnership. Well, good. I mean, that's, that's so needed. You, know, you can't have your education system and your industry running without it's talking separate. to one another, right? right, right. You're supposed to be educating people in part to work in the industries and support the industries who in turn will inform the education system, yes, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, that's, that's good, good to see that you're, you're doing, doing your, uh, your part for that here. Thank and uh, so where do you see PCAT going in the next five years, ten years? Is it going to keep growing, getting bigger? Is there I, more, more need be, for That it? would be a question to ask the director of the program. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I have seen it for the past 17 years, mm -hmm. where it was started and where it's he heading. 
So I see us evolving more and more as time goes on to becoming more and more integrated into the STEM program. Mm -hmm. We work closely with the high schools now and with um, partnering with industry and high schools, mm -hmm. trying to bridge the education that feeds workforce development in a way that benefits all the constituents within our state. So we evolve constantly, and depending on who's in charge, we always have a different focus and different angle. But technology is moving forward, so we move forward. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're not, not going to get away from that, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of a given, is that technology right. is going to right. keep advancing now. And it's, it's an amazing, uh, amazing field to find yourself in. And, and uh, it sounds like you're having having a lot of fun doing that, which Absolutely. is just, which which is Absolutely. really good. And, and it seems like you're so. If, if you had advice for students who are sort of entering the the, the IT field, what, but what would you say to them? In a, I might be biased to answer <laughs> that, but I really think software. 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 Everything is a software to uh -huh. me, from your operating system, from your networking, from security. You know, we do a lot of cybersecurity. Mm -hmm sessions with the students during the summer, during, you know, whenever we have time. And a lot is focused on programming okay. and software. So. Yeah, you, you heard it here, software, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, thank you so much. It was wonderful to have you here. And uh, I very much enjoyed it and learned a lot about the, the PCAT and the IT symposium. Uh, again, maybe we can, I don't know if we can pop that up on the, on the screen, uh, the, the website for the, uh, for the uh, IT Symposium? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's pcat.org slash okay. ITS in caps. Okay. And then the word, the last word is the symposium. Okay. So pcat.org slash IT Symposium okay. is the website. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Renier. And we shall uh, uh, give you uh, good luck on the, on the symposium. And uh, exciting to have you here. I look forward to further conversations. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And when, uh, we hope we'll see you next week. And I'm back for another edition of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii.